All right, welcome to another video. Now, one of the things that happens a lot when it comes to cleaning up mocap is that you normally have a bunch of keys in your animations from beginning to end. And especially for a brand new animator, an animator that perhaps is not super familiar with mocap, it can feel overwhelming. In my course, Motion Capture for Games, I go in detail on how to clean up mocap and not to feel overwhelmed from the very basics to the most advanced. But the one thing that is true is that no matter how experienced you are, dealing with so many keys always is a problem. Now, animators go about it in different ways, and you actually have different techniques to basically reduce the amount of keys that you have in your animation so it can be more manageable. Now, one of the things that I thought it would be super, super cool, especially for a software like Cascador, since it has so many smart features, is for them to have something that basically makes key dense animations a little easier to deal with. And this is where animation and baking comes absolutely clutch when it comes to key dense animations. Now, I'm going to show you guys a little bit of what that is, and hopefully you guys will understand a little bit of what they're trying to do and how it might help you maybe in your pipelines as you work with Cascador. So one of the first things that you have to wrap your head around when it comes to Cascador is these things called fulcrum points. And this is super important because if you don't actually play around with them, your animations won't have the right results whenever you start animating them. Um, and it requires a lot of test and trial for you to actually get to know them. Now, I highly suggest you guys check out the fulcrum points video that Cascador has on their YouTube channel because it gives you a better view of what they are and how they can be helpful but just like anything else like when you go into Maya and you bring a mocap clip and you have to you know tweak it a little bit and prepare it for you to then clean up the mocap animation Falcon points is very similar where you bring that data that animation in then you have to spend some time kind of playing around with not only the points but also the settings of the fulcrum points what's interesting is that they make it easier because you can see when there's a fulcrum point active or inactive by this little round bits around every single controller that you can see here. And you can see if they are active or inactive. And then within the fulcrum settings, you can then make those settings bigger or smaller and tweak them a bit. Now, obviously there's a whole video that needs to happen about that that I won't go into. Definitely check out Cascador for, for more, but just know that fulcrum points are incredibly important for animation and baking. Now, when it comes to animation and baking, this is where it gets interesting. When you bring a piece of mocap or a piece of animation into Cascador that it is key dense, animation dense, it means that you have a key in every single frame. And this is how mocap gets uh, processed. This is how many animations get processed. And even if you actually have hand key animation that you bake down, normally it's baked down to basically have every single frame as key. And this becomes a bit of a problem because untangling that mess becomes super tough and is a bit of a headache. Now, when you actually go ahead and bring your data, making sure that the fulcrum points are set up correctly is absolutely the first thing. So you should actually play around with the collision radius that you have. You should play around with the max speed. Either you want to enforce the fulcrum points, not enforce them. This is where the new learning of the new software needs to happen for all of you. But once that is actually set up, it means that you have physics enabled, and it means that, for example, the feet can actually have contact with the surface automatically, and you don't have so much of that you know, discrepancy in when it comes to foot sliding, which happens a lot in motion capture. So it's 100% worth you spending time setting up these fulcrum points so you don't have that slide, right? So that's number one. Normally, as animators, when it comes to Maya or any other software, we have to spend time basically pinning down those feet as they're actually moving around the level because we only have keys to pin down those feet and get those things to animate correctly. Now, Cascador, the beauty of it is that it helps you by knowing where each foot is placed and basically helping you out that if there's surface, there is friction. And if there's friction, perhaps the foot needs to actually be still in this point, right? You can then press the button animation and baking. And what that does is basically with the smarts of Cascador, it basically reduces your keys just like we would do in Maya, but it does it in a very smart way with all their AI like goodness underneath, which to the point that you don't really see a lot of difference, but 
same thing as Maya, when you start reducing keys, a lot of the time you introduce noise or a lot of the time you make things slightly smoother. And in here, most of the time, at least that I tried it, you can see that it becomes slightly smoother and it kind of understands a little bit better of what you're trying to do when you do that on baking. Now, even though you have that automatic setting and the settings are set up for you as default, you can then go ahead and play with different settings for the auto posing, the interpolation, the position, the keys, how many keys do you want? This is similar to Maya when you actually are merging layers. If you have smart bake baked in, you can say actually bake every two frames or every five frames or make it smart. So basically we know where, where to add the keys. Uh, this is basically where we tweak your settings to make sure that it is to your liking. So if you like less smarts and more animation and more keys, and you don't want to actually see so much destruction, if there's destruction on your animation, you can go ahead and set the settings so you can have more keys in between. So basically there's less smarts underneath. But from what I actually been trying, and once again, I'm still trying it, I'm still checking it out. The default settings work absolutely brilliant. And then once you have that in, same as Maya, you can start tweaking your animation in between those keys to make sure that those hands, that feet, all of those things are basically working to the way you like. Now, pairing this with a video that I made last week when it comes to actually all the lifelink and all the other stuff, auto interpolation becomes really powerful because now you can actually clean up your mocap, reduce the amount of keys, have a little bit of the smarts of Cascador underneath, helping you out to clean up that motion. Plus you can have physics, if you need physics for your mocap, all included within the same software. At least for us, it's very useful because we can start adding specific mocap clips to Cascador that we know need physics, or we know that is physics heavy. And then we can basically clean up that mocap in Cascador, gives us a lot of bang for buck, export that, add it to game, and then Bob's your uncle. So the name of the game is speed. How fast can you actually get that animation to look absolutely amazing, especially when it's mocap, and then add it to game. So it's the path of least resistance. So now what we are doing, just like I mentioned last time, is that certain clips go to Maya, certain clips go to Cascador, depending on what we wanna do, and then we'll do it, right? Um, and I'm starting to miss certain tools the more I work with Cascador, because I'm starting to see the benefits of some of the things that they have and the tooling that they have. Now, I still have lots to learn, but I really like this tool. And I think animation and baking is a godsend for anybody that actually works heavily with key dense animations. Now, that's all I had for you guys. Short, sweet, but I hope you guys go and try it. Make sure you click down below so you can try Cascador and let me know what you think when you do try it. If you like it, dislike it, how do you feel about it? Because for us animators, a lot of the time, it's difficult for us to get used to a new software when animation is already so difficult. It's much easier to just stay in one and then animate and learn and master that one, and that's it. So having said that, if you are one of those adventurous types, then let me know what you think. And that's all. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. And until next week, stay well, stay safe. Peace.